Hi, this is Christian Cantrell, and I want to demo an animation done in HTML with Request Animation Frame in Canvas. Actually, two canvases, I guess I should say. Request Animation Frame is a replacement for Set Timeout and Set Interval in the context of animations because it's better suited for rendering. First of all, it's tied to the browser's repaint loop as opposed to Set Interval and Set Timeout, which of course can fire at any time between repaints. And secondly, since request animation frame is specifically for animation rather than just a general purpose timer, uh, the browser can safely throttle your animation loop when your tab is inactive, which frees up CPU cycles for other tasks and saves battery life on mobile devices and laptops, etc. So for instance, uh, we have this animation in the foreground now, and if we go down to the task manager, that's ordered by CPU usage, We'll see that this rocker chick tab is taking up about 10%, uh, sometimes it'll go up to 11% CPU. But when I put it in the background and switch to another tab, we can see that it goes down to 0.1%, sometimes it'll just go to zero. So essentially, it's not using any CPU at all. So again, this is because request animation frame is telling the browser that I'm specifically doing an animation as opposed to just uh, general purpose timing. If I were using uh, something like set timeout or set interval, uh, it would have to keep firing because the application might be doing something important in the background. But in this case, the browser knows that I'm doing something that's related to rendering. And since I'm not looking at the rendering, I'm not looking at the animation, then there's no sense in, in uh, displaying it. Uh, when I switch back to this rocker chick tab, uh, we can see that our CPU usage goes back up and the animation resumes. So let's take a look at how this is done and let's start with the animation itself. Um, I did not do this animation. This was done by Chris Torginus. So thank you, Chris. Uh, I'm just the programmer. Chris did this animation in Flash. So I brought it into Flash Professional CS6, which has a cool new feature called Generate Sprite Sheet. So I just right click on the animation, uh, choose Generate Sprite Sheet. And what we'll see in a second here is a dialog box which will allow me to configure the different properties of the sprite sheet before I export it. So here we go. We see the sprite sheet itself here in this tab. I can click over to a preview, which is nice so I can actually see it working. I can choose the image format and I can configure various other properties. Uh, in addition to the sprite sheet, there's a data file that, that also gets generated and that data file is the information that I need in order to find the different frames within the sprite sheet. I'm having it exported uh, as a JSON array, which I think is most appropriate for JavaScript. So let's uh, switch over and take a look at the code here. We'll start with the, the data uh, file here. So here's our JSON file with our frame information. Uh, in particular, this property right here shows me uh, where I can locate this particular frame. And now we'll take a look at the code. Um, so this file, it's 192 lines, uh, so we're obviously not going to go through all of it. Uh, I'll just show you the most important parts. Um, the first thing you'll notice here is that we have to find the request animation frame function. So this is a relatively new API. Um, it's still namespaced, uh, which means you have to sort of look around for it, uh, depending on which browser is being used. And if you can't find it, then just fall back on set timeout. The next thing we do is call this load sprite sheet data function, which is here. And what this function does is uh, just loads that JSON file that we just looked at and uh, saves it uh, to a local variable so that we can iterate through that array and uh, find the data that we need in our sprite sheet. The next thing we do is load the sprite sheet itself by using a JavaScript image object. Then we call a function called, uh, called do layout. Now, this animation is actually composed of two canvases. We have this foreground canvas, which is uh, composited on top of a background canvas. The foreground canvas is obviously the one done with the sprite sheet. The background canvas is not done with the sprite sheet. It's just done uh, using the canvas drawing APIs. So we configure our two canvases here, the background and the foreground canvases. And then we would call, uh, call the function uh, request animation frame, which actually starts the animation. So let's jump to this tick function. Now what tick does, this is really our animation uh, function here. Request animation frame will run at um, as close to 60 frames per second as it can, which is um, 
it allows for a nice sort of high resolution, um, very smooth animation. In fact, more than I need. So what I'm doing here is I'm throttling it down to just 30 frames per second, which is all this particular animation really needs. And the way I do that is just by comparing a couple timestamps and determining whether I should just you know, skip this iteration or animate. Now the first part of this condition here, this not t, this is here just in case we weren't able to find a uh, request animation frame function uh, in case we had to fall back on this set timeout. Because set timeout already has a frame rate specified. So I've already determined um, how often this needs to fire in order to give me 30 frames per second. So that means in my tick function here, if, I'm, uh, if a timestamp is not being passed in, which would be the case if I was using a request animation frame, uh, then that means I'm using a timer. Uh, that means that it's already been throttled and the animation can go ahead and happen. So this code is all set up to use request animation frame if it can be found and to successfully fall back on a timer if not. Um, and then I just call animation, which is a function down here, um, which is actually copying the pixels. So that's really all there is to it. Um, if you want to uh, see this in action or check out the code itself, um, I'll put a link to the blog post in the description of the video, and you can, uh, you can have a look. Thanks for watching.